Oh, yeah. So the last thing that we were talking about was how the geometrical object, the, the most basic geometrical object, which is a point, can be described numerically by placing it in a Cartesian coordinate system, right? Uh, so this is not anything new. You know that uh, in, a, in a Cartesian coordinate system, you can give the location of a point by specifying its coordinates, the X and Y pair of coordinates. Um, and, then, uh, and then we looked at how we can find the distance between two given points. If you know the coordinates of two points, you can find how far apart they are uh, using Pythagoras theorem. So we derived a little formula for it. Um, square of the x difference plus the square of the y difference and you square root it, you get the distance between two points. So that's one thing we did. And then we uh, also learned how to find the, the coordinates of the midpoint between two points. If I give you the coordinates of any two points, you can find the coordinates of the midpoint of the line connecting them, right? So that's the midpoint formula we did. And then the third thing that we did was, if I give you the coordinates of any two points, you can find the gradient of the line connecting these two points. So again, that was not, nothing new. Uh, we already know it. So we are just kind of lining up everything nicely here to see how in coordinate geometry, we are able to say things about, okay, let me see some um, Afra is saying, oh, it's okay, Afra, thank you for letting me know. If anything goes wrong at your end, uh, let me know. If you're joining late, let me know. It's all good. Um, right, so uh, slope or the gradient, we have the formula for that. Um, and then we also, I think, now I'm not, I can't, remember exactly the exact point where we stopped. I think we talked about this too, about uh, the, the relationship between the gradients of two line segments, if they are parallel and if they are perpendicular. We did that, right? Did we do that? So if you have two line segments or two lines parallel to each other, uh, their gradients would obviously be the same because gradient is a measure of the slope. So parallel lines means they have the same slope, the same steepness. So they would have the same gradient. And then if you have two lines perpendicular to each other, then there are two ways of saying the relationship between their gradients. One way of saying it is you can say that the product of their gradients is equal to negative one. Like if this is M1 gradient and if this is M2 gradient, M1 times M2 is minus one. That's one way of like thinking about it. Or you can just, um, a better way of like um, remembering it is <clears throat> the, the gradient of one line is the negative reciprocal of the other gradient, right? That's a, that's a quick way of um, figuring out the gradient of uh, perpendicular lines. If I, give, if I say that the gradient of a certain line is half, the gradient of any perpendicular line to it would be negative two. So you think of half, you turn it upside down, take the reciprocal and change the sign. So, right, so if, if one is half, the other one is negative two. If one is, sorry, if one is negative five, the other gradient is uh, one fifth, positive one fifth. You change the sign and turn it upside down. So that's the relationship between gradients of two perpendicular lines. We wrote that, right? Did we write it? Yes, I think we did. Somebody has to quickly respond either by just actually speaking to me or like quickly dropping a, or dropping, uh, a message. We wrote the note, right, up to that? Yes. yes. So yes. which part are you referring to? <laughs> Parallel and perpendicular lines about parallel and perpendicular oh, yes, lines we wrote, right. And then, so that was, um, that was all about points. And when you have two points, 
how you can think of a line and what we can say about these lines and things like that. And then the second topic, so that was the first topic, points. We were talking about everything related to points. And then the second topic is straight lines. We started that too, I think. We stopped it. Okay, Tenami, thank you. Yes, we, we started straight lines. I don't think we did the whole thing there. Uh, so then when you think of a line in, uh, in the Cartesian coordinate plane, uh, let me go to the, let me take you to the um, board. Okay. So if you have a line <coughs> in the Cartesian coordinate plane, Uh, like that. So my my lines are not very. Uh, this is the x and y axis. Uh, if you have a line, so you have a line like that, right? So once you have, so we we started to talk about, we started to talk about. Um, so a line is another geometric object, geometrical object. A line is made out of infinitely many points. Um, uh, so when you have a line, if you if you just think of a line lying in space like that, uh, it's just a line. I mean, there's nothing much you can talk about it. And even if you wanted to talk about things without a reference, uh, there's nothing much you can do. But when you have this line placed in a Cartesian coordinate system, or rather, when you have placed a Cartesian coordinate system in the background of the line, now, like suddenly, a lot of things you can talk about and we give mathematical terms to these things. The first thing ha that happens is we say that this, this line suddenly starts to have an identity, right? It's somebody now, like you can say, oh, you can, how, how, how do we identify a line in, a, in the Cartesian plane? We identify a point by a pair of numbers that are called the, coordinate, the, the coordinates of the line. Sorry, coordinates of the point. So a point is identified by uh, coordinates. A line is identified by what? Like, what's the name? Like, how do we identify like the ID number? So some, you can think of something like that. How, what, what do we identify a line by? Identify means, now even if you think of a point, like two comma three, when I say two comma three point, that's unique. There's just one point that has the coordinates two comma three. So, so when, when I say two comma three coordinates, I am specifying a particular a unique point on the Cartesian um, Cartesian plane. So that's a that's a pair of coordinates. Just like that, I can specify. Yes, Senitu, very good. I can specify or I can identify a line by an equation. If I say y equals minus 2x plus 3, I'm talking, talking about a particular unique line. There is no other line that has the same equation. It could be this same line. So for example, this particular line could have, could, might, could have the equation. The equation of this could be y equals minus 2x plus 3. Oops. Yeah, so I have a problem there in my uh, screen. Right? So it has, a, if I say y equals minus 2x plus 3, that's this line. Um, <clears throat> it's unique. So we identify lines with equations. I think we wrote the note for that too. And, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, right, did we start talking about, then we, we need to talk about this equation. One thing that you have to really understand is, what this equation tells you. How did it, how did one write this equation? Where did these numbers come from? What does it tell you? So clearly, it's, it's telling me, so this is the, uh, let me show you the axis, this is x axis and this is y axis. Clearly you have the x and the y um, in this equation. You have the x and the y in the equation. What does it exactly telling me when I say y is equal to, <coughs> minus 2x plus 3, it's, 
what, 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 what does it tell me? We didn't write the complete note in straight lines. Something happened with the connection that day. Uh-huh. Uh, did, we, did we not write? Uh, what did we write? Did we write anything? Uh, is, is anyone able to like tell me the last line that we wrote? Oh, only one sentence. Uh, who can read that to me? A straight line on a plane can be specified by an equation that relates the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Okay. <coughs> by an equation that relates the x coordinate and the y coordinate. That's all we wrote. Okay. Give me a moment. Right, okay. Can you tell me what this equation tells you? What is this equation? Now, <clears throat> when it comes to a point, when you say two comma three, you know what it means. It's telling, when, when I say two comma three, those two numbers tells you where the point is the number, if, if it is two comma three, two means starting from the origin, you have to go two units in the direction of X and then three units in the direction of Y and you will find that point. That's, that's what two comma three means. Similarly, what do you mean by when I say, oh, there is this line and the equation is Y equals minus two X plus three. What is the significance of this equation? What does it tell me? What, what is it showing me? It has a negative gradient. It's telling me that it has a negative gradient. So these are, yes, these are information. Uh, Senito. Senito says all points in the line follow the equation. I like that answer. After your answer is also right. You are, you are, you are saying um, an information that we can extract from the equation. What you were saying, Afra was, and Afra said, it has a negative gradient. What she did was, by looking at this equation, she extracted a piece of information about the line. But my question is, what is this line tell you? What, what is it? Um, the answer is, Senitu's answer is a good answer. He says, all points in this line, because this, this equation specifies this line. How, 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 does, how does the equation does that? All points in this line follow the equation. What, what do we mean by follow the equation? Any point on this line, the coordinates of any point on this line, if I, sh if I, if I have a certain, if I take a certain point on this line, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate, whatever, like say X1, Y1, this relationship would hold. The, this pair of coordinates of any point on this line would hold this relationship between the X and the Y. The Y coordinate, this is telling you the relationship between the Y coordinate and the X coordinate of any point on this line. So, so if I turn this equation into words, what it's telling me is that the Y coordinate of any point on this line is equal to negative two times the x coordinate plus three, right? That's what it's telling me. It's the relationship between the x and the y coordinate of any point on this line. So if I take one here, the, the x and y coordinate will hold that relationship. If I take a point here, it, the x and y coordinates will hold that relationship. Before I forget, another thing that you have to know is that when you think of a line, how long is it? Now, when I say a line, the word a line, a line, you think of a line. How long is it? Like the y equals minus 2x plus 3 line, how long is it? can't guess. Uh, uh, that means you can't say how long it is. 
Is that what you mean? We don't know the length of the line. Is that what you mean? Uh -huh. uh, any different answers? How long is this line? When I say the line y equals minus 2x plus 3, and I have like drawn it a bit here, how long is this line? Anyone else? Senitu? Senumi? Now I have like drawn it from this point to this point, right? Uh, but how long is it actually? When you just say uh, that this is the line y equals minus 2x plus 3, it's, infi it's infinitely long. It's an infinitely long line uh, to to make it more clear, if you like, you can just draw, like, I don't want to add arrows because it, it confuses with the axes, but it goes on forever. It's an infinitely long line. Like, why should it have a, why should it have a certain length if the length is infi infinite, right? Because you're thinking of a line. So when you have this, this is, you're, you're thinking of the two-dimensional space, two-dimensional space, like a, uh, like a paper that is infinitely large and it's a line on this paper, so it's infinitely long. And along this line, all the points have this relationship between the x and the y coordinates, right? So this, what the equation is telling you is very important that you understand what, what, what that is. Uh, so for example, if I tell you that the x coordinate of a certain point on this line is x naught, what is the y coordinate? What is the y coordinate? If the x coordinate is x naught, what is the y coordinate? <clears throat> Are there, okay, Afra has a question. Uh, you all can see it, but I'm just reading it out. Are there graphs with a specific length? I mean the three graphs which are finite three, Ah, uh, I mean, are there graphs? Yeah, of course. If you say a line segment, did you notice I, we, we, uh, sometimes I said line segment? For example, you might have, I can talk about something like this. I can say, let me go to a new page. I can just quickly, like if I have a point A here and a point B here, I can talk about the line segment AB, line segment AB, that it's a finite line, finite, long, uh, of a, length, uh, a line of finite length, that means uh, the, it's a line connecting two points. So when you say a line connecting two points, it has an end and a, uh, a beginning and an end. So it's a line segment, right? It is a line segment. And still you can give the equation of that. So it's, it's actually what happens then is you have this long, long line, but you are thinking of only a, only a segment of it. You can do that. But when you give the equation of this, say this is y equals minus 3x plus 5, this, this is an infinitely long line. But the line segment AB is a piece of that line. Is that clear? So we do talk about segments, uh, line segments. Uh, and line segments can have equations too. Uh, but when you give the equation, it can be the, the infinitely long line, but you are just talking about a part of that line, right? Then it's called a line segment. Hope that is clear. You're welcome, Afra. Right, so coming back to my question. My question is, uh, I have a point on this line, on the line, it's on the line. Um, now, uh, something, something that I have to tell you is that I have drawn a huge, huge dot here. Uh, a point on the line must be just a point on the line. It must be on the line. It can't like go off the line like that, right? A point has no dimensions. I can't actually draw a point. If I draw a point, you won't see it. So that's why I have to keep it, you know, I have to like shade and show a big circle. But you have to know in your head, that's just a point. I am just drawing it that way so that you can see it. So it's just on the line. And if I say that the X coordinate of that point is X naught, so I'm just abstractly talking. I'm not taking an actual number. Oh, let's take a number first. Okay, let's make it a bit simple first. Let's take a number. I say that the x coordinate of that point is three. How can it be three? It's on this side. Is minus three. What's the y coordinate? Ah, Senith is giving me. Okay, right, Senith. 
<laughs> yeah, Senith is right. So um, that means we don't, I think we don't, we don't have to talk about, uh, okay, if it is negative three, if the X coordinate is negative three, how can you find the Y coordinate? Because you know this point is on the line, you know that the X and the Y must keep, must keep this relationship. We, we know that the Y coordinate has to be no minus two times the X coordinate plus three. So you multiply minus three by two, minus two and add a three, right? That's, that's, that's how you do it. So if I say it's X naught, like, like if I take a letter X naught, Y coordinate would be minus two X naught plus three, right? Minus, I think you are missing a minus sign there. I'm sure that's a mistake. So in this case, if it is minus three, it would be the times zero six plus nine, okay? And similarly, if I give you, like if I give you one coordinate, you can find the other one. If I say, okay, this point is on the line and the Y coordinate is 10, what's the X coordinate? You can find it because you know what the relationship between the X and the Y coordinate of the points on this line. That's what the equation is telling you. So you're able to find the X if Y is given of any point on this line or find the, find the Y if X is given of any point on this line. And also you are able to find, if I, if I tell you a point, if I say two comma three and I and ask you, is two comma three point on this line or off this line? You can find that too. See, like immediately from this equation, there are so many things that you can talk about. So this, this equation, this equation um, uh, um, takes a certain subset of points on this whole set of points on the plane, if you think of it that way. So I hope that is clear. Uh, so the, the reason why I spent some time talking about the equation of a line is because you really have to have a thorough understanding of what it means. Because what I know from, <clears throat> from experience is that in your um, O levels, you just, you just use it to use it in questions, but you don't have a proper understanding of what it is. Um, so make sure that you all understand that. Right, then we will talk about this equation of a line. There are different ways in which you can write it. You can write it in different forms. We say, we call them forms, just like a quadratic expression, we could write in different forms, remember? The same quadratic expression. Now, this, is, this is a different thing. I'm just trying to show you that we have done a similar thing in a different topic. Uh, when you have a quadratic expression uh, that you usually write in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, that's the usual form, but we learned that the same expression can be written in different forms. It can be written in factorized form. It can be written in complete square form. So there are three forms in which a quadratic expression can be written in. Similarly, the equation of a straight line this is an equation, right? That was just an expression. The, here, the equation of a straight line can be written in different forms. Now I know that you are most familiar with this particular form that I have written it here, y equals minus two x plus three. What do you call this form? Do you know the, the, the name that is given to this way of writing the equation of a line? What's the name of that form? You call it what form? Does anyone know? You don't know, right? Okay, um, so that's the next thing that we are going to see. We are going to talk about different forms in which you can write the equation of a, uh, yes, anything, that's one way of saying it. Yes, uh, that's a long way of saying it, y equals mx plus c form. You, we do say it like that too. Uh, there is a better, like a nice name for it, but yeah, this is, this is absolutely correct, okay? It is called y equals mx plus c form because uh, it has this format, like a template, y, is equal to a number times x plus a number. The two numbers are given symbols m and c, and you know that m stands for gradient, c is for the y-intercept. Yes, so y equals mx plus c form. Or in words, this form is called slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form, and I'm sure um, it, it doesn't need a lot of thinking to see why that it is called slope-intercept form. Huh, now, I wonder 
you why it's called slope intercept form because it has the slope and the intercept right so <clears throat> afra is saying <laughs> what's that afra m divided by x is that divided by yeah no that is wrong that is wrong uh, there is um, uh, I think you have mixed it up there is a form that looks like that uh, uh, it's not m over x and um, c over y it's this like if I, if I write it on the you don't have that form we don't learn that form uh, under p1 here but I will just show you I'm sure that that's where it's coming from that's how you remember it let me just um, you can write it in this form some number like some a over x plus some another number over y is equal to one. You can write it in that form. We are not learning that form, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, okay. So here a and b, are, it's not m and c. It's some other number a and b. If you say m here, you would be saying it's the gradient there. No, it won't, the, it's not the gradient that would come there. It's a different number. Uh, so yeah, and always this is one. This number is always one. So that's another form too. So, uh, uh, right. So let's go back to this. Okay. So we are going to learn how many forms? One, two, three forms. One, two, yeah, one, two, three forms. We are going to learn three different forms in which the equation of a straight line can be written in. So the first form is the form that you already know. It's called slope intercept form. It's called slope intercept because when you write the equation in that form, the slope is readily there, the intercept is readily there. So it's called slope intercept form. Uh, the second form is called point slope form. Point slope form. You will see why they're called the way they're called. And the last one, the last one that you learn, the last form you learn is standard form. And the form that I showed you for Afra was another form, it's called intercept form, uh, but we are not learning it. If I, if, if for, for, in, for, for, for your, for your like knowledge, extra knowledge, since we like just talked about it, uh, the, the significance of this form is that if you have written the equation of a straight line in this form, the, the, the information that it is giving you, just like in quadratic, uh, quadratic expressions, remember each form was telling you different information about the, about the graph of the corresponding function. Now, now, when I say things like this, you have, what I say must make sense to you because you have learned all this, okay? Uh, so you remember in quadratic expressions, uh, each, each different form of the quadratic expression was giving you a different set of information about, about what? About the graph of the corresponding function, okay? Just like that, here, these different forms in which you write the equation of a straight line t gives you a different information about that line. Okay, so this form that we are not learning uh, tells you where it cuts the x-axis. This number is where it cuts the x-axis. So that's the x-intercept. And this number tells you where it cuts the y-axis. So that is the y-intercept or c. So you can actually use c there. Um, so that's a cool way of writing it. I mean, if you have it, you can just sketch it very quickly because you know the line, where the line cuts the x and the y-axis. Right, anyway. Coming back to this, so we will learn the three forms that uh, that we are, we have to learn. But before that, we'll just write one more sentence um, uh, after the sentence that you have written. Mm, I will have to dictate today. Okay, so if you are ready to write, uh, after the last sentence, the, the, the one sentence that you have written, you write this equation can someone read that uh, i'm sorry can you read that uh, sentence one more time because i have i have changed it when i uh, gave you it's not the exact the same thing that i have here can you read that line again please one of you so read it slowly read it slowly tell me read it a straight line on a plane can be specified by an equation 
that relates the x coordinate and the y coordinate. Okay. Oh, then that's enough. We don't need another equation, uh, another <laughs> another sentence. Uh, we'll just say. Um, uh, what this equation is called, we'll, we'll add another sentence to that. Uh, you write after that. This equation is called, this equation is called, this equation is called, the Cartesian equation of the line, Cartesian equation of the line. So like to respect the uh, person who um, came up with this coordinate system, Rene Descartes, I told you about him. Uh, that's why this is called Cartesian coordinate system and this equation is also called Cartesian equation. This equation is called Cartesian equation. Okay, and then write, this equation of a line, this equation of a line, this equation of a line, can be written in three forms. There are more forms, we are learning on it only three, okay? This equation of a line can be written in three forms. Let's list them down first. One, slope intercept form, slope hyphen intercept form. That's how you write it with the hyphen in the middle. Slope in you read it slope intercept. When you write, you write slope hyphen intercept. So number one, slope intercept form. Number two, point slope form, point hyphen slope, point slope form. Number three, standard form, standard form. Slope intercept form, point slope form and standard form, one, two, three. Remember for quadratics, we had a standard form. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c, that form. Okay, so you will see like this standard form is also like that. Right, then a subtopic. Let's talk about the slope intercept form. Put, a top, put your first, so we have three subtopics coming up. Uh, slope intercept, we'll talk about each form. Um, so first, the first sub subtopic, under straight lines, your big topic is straight lines. First subtopic, slope intercept form. In brackets, you can say y equals mx plus c form. It is called by that too. y equals mx plus c form. Let's write under that. Write under that. If we know, if we know the gradient M, M in red, if we know the gradient M, M in red, if you know the gradient M and the y-intercept C, C in red, and the y-intercept C of a line, Y 
if we know the gradient m and the y-intercept c of a line, comma, its equation can be written in, its equation can be written in, its equation can be written in, the slope intercept form, the slope intercept form. Put a colon and then write this form y equals mx plus c. So the gradient goes right here. This is the gradient and the y-intercept goes right here. y equals mx plus c. Right, you can put a box if you like. You can put a box. So, the importance of this form is um, it's just that it's just that if the two information gradient and intercept are available to you and you are asked to write the equation of the line you just use this form right if i tell you that the gradient uh, if i tell you that the gradient of a certain line is minus 2 and the y-intercept of, of the line is seven, and ask you to write the, can you write the equation of the line with these two informa information? Just that, is that enough to write the relationship between all the points on the, on the, of the points on this line? Yes, if you put it into this form, it gives you the equation of that line, y equals minus two x plus seven, okay? So the usage is, that if you have these two information and if you have to write the equation of the line you can just put it in the in this form and write it because in the in this form those are the only two things you need and conversely if you have if you have the equation in this form you readily have the two pieces of information the gradient and the y-intercept okay hope that is clear uh, then uh, uh, just just a little uh, some extra information about it. You know that if you have, if you think of any um, any slant line, like um, I'm going to like just. Uh, sorry, my connection dropped. Right? See, it can happen anywhere. Then it's not a, It's not just at my place. Um, <laughs> Is, this, is the recording still going? Yeah, okay. So we were talking about the slope intercept form and I was just going to tell you that like when you think of a line, there are like three different types of lines you can, you can think of. Slant lines, vertical lines, and horizontal lines, right? So any slant line would have that form, but a, a horizontal or a vertical line, because the M and the C become certain other things, they, they, they start to have a, they, they, they look slightly different. So let me quickly show you that. Uh, if you have um, uh, any slant line, I'll say any slant line, any slant line, let me try using, I actually have this, uh, Let's see which works better. No, I think my finger is better. Any slant line. Um, that means that means if you have like any you know, slant line like that. Right, slant lines. Then um, something that you have to like you you already know is that any line that goes this way has a positive gradient, and you know why that is so. 
and any line this way has a negative gradient right from the gradient formula you see why why these have a positive number and these have a negative number for the gradient so here m is positive just do a small sketch of this um, m is positive here m is negative And then if you think of, um, I'll, I'll show you vertical and horizontal lines separately. I'll minimize this. And then these are little topics under that, okay, going, uh, going under that. So any slant line would be like that. Any uh, vertical and horizontal lines vertical and horizontal excuse my uh, poor handwriting if you think of any um, so I'll do two diagrams for that just one and then one for this I'm trying to squeeze everything into one screen. If you have like vertical lines like here and here or horizontal lines like that. Okay, the form, what's the, like this, now the general form is y equals mx plus c. We know this, this is y equals mx plus c. But this form reduces to, when it comes to vertical and horizontal lines, it reduces to, for, for any vertical line, it reduces to x equals, I'll write it here, x equals some number k. I'll say k, k stands for any number, some number. What is that number? The, 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 where it cuts right here, this k. I think we'll just keep one, uh, we'll just keep one line okay and for any horizontal line for any horizontal line I'll just block box these the all any slant line looks like that any uh, vertical line looks like that any horizontal line would go like y is equal to a number k now please make a note of what k is I am trying to squeeze in so in these two cases, k is any number. k is, here k is, can I write, where can I write this? Let me get a, k, oh, that is, k is the, K is the point where the line cuts the x-axis. And for the horizontal line, K is the point where the line cuts the y-axis. Let's write that too here. K is the point. I have written part, the point, the point two times here now. Oops. I can't. K is the point where, okay, and then here is where, is the point where the line. cuts the y axis. Oops, it's flying. 
<laughs> yeah, it's lying. Wait. Line, not ein. Line. So here, here this this point is K. This point is K. So this is uh, nothing new again. You know all this already. So just uh, make a note of that. Copy this quickly. Let me know when you are done. So any slant line would actually have the 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 whole y equals n x plus c form but it reduces to x equals a number or y equals a number when you have uh, when if your line is either vertical or horizontal now i want you to think about how how that happens how come that the equation of a vertical line is x equals a number like x equals 2 does that give me the relationship between the x and the y coordinate of all the points on that line? When you say x equals 2, it's just telling me x equals 2. How so? So as you copy this, I want you to think about that and tell me what you think about it. Okay, I think we're done. Oh, Sinus is asking, any point in the line should have positive 2 as it's very good. Therefore, it simply will be a straight line. Therefore, no need to mention the very nice Sinus. So, the, how, the reason why the equation of, a, for example, the equation of a vertical line just becomes x equals a number is because we don't have to say anything about the uh, about the y coordinate the y coordinate can be any number what we need to say is that is that the x coordinate of all the points on this line should be equal to this whatever so say for example say you have x equals 2 this is an equa uh, equation of a straight line x equals 2 you have to know that it represents a vertical line and why, why do we say it's x equals 2? Because the x coordinate of all the points on that line is 2. That's all we need to say. Since we are, we are not saying anything about y, it means y can be any number, but the x has to be 2. So for example, the points on this line could be 2 comma 1, 2 comma 5, 2 comma 3, 2 comma 0, 2 comma minus 5, 2 comma any other number. x must be always 2 and y can be any number. So hope that is clear. And similarly, for any horizontal line, when you say y equals, so if for a horizontal line, what stays the same? The y coordinate stays the same. X can go anywhere it wants, but the y has to stay the same. And you say what that y needs to be. Y equals, say, 3 means it's the line crossing the y axis at 3. So all the points on that line, uh, the y coordinate of all the points on that line is 3. Right? Good, Senitu. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are you done copying this? No, miss. Okay. So I have it now scribbled on the screen. Don't copy those. Let me erase this little thing that I wrote here. Okay.
Done, Miss. Done. Okay. Others are done too. Can I move on to the next part? Looks like. So I'll stay on the screen. Uh, put the next topic, which is the next form. Point slope form. Point slope form. So this, this that that topic is parallel to. Um, slope intercept form. This is the second form of the equation of a straight line, point slope form. Point slope form. Now in this form, can I change the screen? Can I go to a new page? Okay, Miss. Yeah, okay. Uh, in this form, let me change this back to that so that you can see me. Um, it's called point slope form, right? Point slope form. Point, as I said, with a hyphen in the middle. Point slope form. You can guess why it is called point slope form. That form allows you, uh, so uh, same thing, right? If you have one point, any point on the line given to you and the slope of the line. So if you know these two pieces of information, a point on the line and the slope of the line, just it's, uh, you can write the equation of the line using this form. It's, it's giving you a certain form to write it in, okay? Uh, I will show you how that form comes um so if you have the point and the slope you can write it in that form and vice versa if you have the if you have the equation of a line written in point slope form you already have two information you can readily see the coordinates of one point on the line and the slope of the line right uh, what happens in point slope form so say you have um say you know one point in, on on a line so I give you a point on the line. I give you a point. I give you the coordinates of a point. Say I say it's two comma three. I give you one point. And then I also give you the slope. I say the slope is five, right? And with these two information, you can write the equation of the line in point slope form. Now it's not like magic. Who, who how, how does it come? I will show you all that. Um, uh, I'll, I'll write the form first. This is the form, okay? You can use these information. Now, there are three numbers involved here, right? The X and the Y coordinate of the point, two numbers there, and the M, that's another number. So three numbers are there. Using this, you can write the equation in the point slope form. Uh, this is how the form goes. Y minus, it's always minus, Y minus, uh, if this is x naught, I will write the general form. If the two points are x naught, y naught, it goes y minus x naught equals m times, you have your m, sorry, I'll write that in red. m times, that's your, you have your m, m given to you, m times x minus Sorry, not y minus x, or y minus y naught. I, okay, that should be y. Y minus y naught. Y minus y naught equals m times x minus x naught. That is an accepted way of writing the equation of a line. I'm sure now you would not like this form um, because you are so used to the y equals mx plus c form. You, you, might, you, you might have trouble accepting, ah, that's a form? E, can't we like simplify it a little bit? Don't we expand the brackets? No, you don't have to. Like if you give it in this form, give the equation of a line in this form, it's like, it's, it's accepted. It's a accepted form in which you can write the equation of a line. So for example, for the example I've taken, if I give you that the point in a line is two comma three, and the gradient is five and ask you to write the equation of that line, you can simply do, huh, okay. It should be y minus, I'll write, I'll, I'll do in black. The equation of this line, okay, is y minus three 
is equal to 5 times x minus 2. That's it. That's it. That's the equation. How, how did that form come? Where did that form come from? Can anyone see, see what's going on here? What? Y minus Y naught equals N times X minus X naught? I'll show you in a new page. I'll come back to this. Okay. Can anyone see what's going on? So should it always be Y minus? Yes, it is always Y minus the, the other coordinate. I'll show you how it comes. Then you will understand. Okay. Here's how, it, how, here's how it happens. Say you have this line. Now, what, what did I give you? I gave you one point on the line, right? I said it's two comma three. And then I, told, I also told you that the gradient is, how much, five? Is it five? Yeah, five. It can never be y, y naught. Oh, it can be, it can be. That, that is also right. It's just that um, it's a convention. We stick to one way of writing it, but if you swap, swap it, the other thing also must be swapped. If you go y naught minus y, are they, uh, uh, on the other side, it should be x naught minus x, right? That is correct too. Uh, it's just that we have accepted this as a form and the, like it's a convention to write it this way. But it, if you, you can see that if I swap these two, would it make a, like if I say, if I say three minus y is equal to five times two minus x, it's the same thing. It's like I have multiplied the whole equation by a negative sign. Like if I multiply the two sides of this by a negative sign, I get this. Right? So that can be done too. And you will see why that is if when I, Senitha is asking, Miss, is it related to the equation of, of exactly Senitha? Uh, and Afra is asking, we never simplify brackets. I mean, you can, you can like quickly turn this into y equals mx plus c form. You don't have to. I know that you like, oh, this happens all the time, every year. Uh, you, you, you can't keep a bracket without expanding it. It's okay, but this is, a, this is a form. So that's how we write it. It's just, we have created this form uh, so, because it's convenient. I mean, if you, if you simplify it, nothing wrong. You can simplify it and keep two. I mean, this here, now I said, okay, let me erase this one, let me erase this. Negative sign, oops, everything went off. Um, now what did we get here? Because five, this, I said, you can just leave it like that. But I mean, if you, if you are very, if you, are, you really can't um, stand having that equal, the bracket there, go ahead and simplify it. If you, if you write it like that, that's fine too, but it, that's not, you, like you, you went off of the form. You don't have the form anymore now. If the form is gone, the form is gone, but the equation is correct still. Can I move the three to the other side? Yeah, you can. You can do five X minus 10 plus three is minus seven. That is the same too. Now it's the Y equals MX plus C form. You came from point slope form to the slope intercept form. The point is, this is an accepted way of writing the equation of a straight line. That's it, that's, that's all I'm saying. Uh, and we have given it a name, point slope form. Uh, because when you have the equation in that form, you can see or extract the coordinates of a point on that line. Where is the core? Here, this number and this number. Two comma three is a point on this line. And this number over here is a, is a, a slope of that line. But the moment you change it, like the moment you change it to that, uh, it's, that information is gone. It's gone. Slope is still there, but the point is gone. You can't get, you can't recover it back. Do you see that? Okay, so it's just a convention. We have like agreed to accept it as the equation, a certain form of the equation of a straight line. Uh, now you see now when you turn it into this form, now a different pair of information becomes becomes visible. You can see the slope. There you go, that's the slope. And you can see the y-intercept. Because it's the slope-intercept form now. In the slope-intercept form, the slope and the intercept are visible in the equation. They are just visible. You can see them. In the, in the point-slope form, a point and the slope are just visible. You can just see them. That's it. Right? Is that clear? 
Now I will show you where this point slope form comes from. Uh, right, as I said, so if you if this is your uh, line and I have given you one point on the line and the gradient on that line. Uh, so what Senetu said was right. This equation comes from the relationship of the gradient. How do we write the gradient of a line? To write the gradient of a line, we need two points, right? That we all know. To write the to write the gradient of a line, we need two points. Now I have given you one point. I have given you the coordinates of one point. So what I do is I take okay. Suppose another point on this uh, line is x comma y. Okay, a general point. This could be any point. So I say x comma y. I have a specific one point. Two comma three is there. I take another general point x comma y. Uh, and now what I do is I can say this since I know the gradient, I can say that from the formula. Let me minimize this. Let me write the formula for gradient. You know that the formula for the gradient is m is equal to y difference, right? Like y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2, right? This is the formula for the gradient. I'm going to apply it here. What do I get when I apply it? I can say that 5 is equal to, okay, that's my gradient. 5 is equal to uh, using these two points that I have marked, this and this. I can say y minus, I'm using this first, y minus 3 over x minus 2. Is that correct? This is the y difference over x difference. Now I cross multiply. I get 5 times x minus 2 equals y minus 3. That's the equation. Because that is, tell, that is giving me how the x and the y coordinate are related uh, for any point on this line. And then that, is, that, we have, that we have created as a form in which you can write the equation of, the, of this line. Okay, so that's where it comes from. And for Af I think it was Afra who asked that. Um, it could have been 3 minus y over 2 minus x. Still the same. But as a standard, we always go about y minus the number and the x minus the number. But there is nothing wrong if you swap the order, but it has to be the same order in both. That's, that, that, that's what you have to remember. Is that clear? Okay, so is asking, is there any possible way to find the real number of x and y in the coordinate? Okay, Senitu, now before you write the equation, before now, before you set this up, I can't, can, can I write the, um, uh, can I write a specific point? Can I write a specific point? Can I find exactly another point on this line? Once I have gotten the <clears throat> once I have gotten the equation this way, now I can generate if I want. I can generate any number of points I want. When x equals one, for example, if I want to find <clears throat> the point corresponding to x equals one, I put one here. I put one for x here, and I can find the corresponding y coordinate, or vice versa. If I want to find when y is equal to a certain number that I want, what should be the x coordinate? I can do that. Once I have set up the equation, then I can generate the points on this line. If we didn't know both x and y, can we find them both? Uh, what do you mean by that? We don't, the, that is what we are doing. We, we do not know both x and y. <coughs> Right now, okay, so we don't know these two. This is a general point, right? But we can generate <clears throat> because this is an infinitely long line. We know that there has to be a point somewhere on this where x is one or where x is two, where x is three, where x is 5.9. So you pick any number for x because there has to be a point on this line um, for which the x is any point that any number that you give me. And for a given number for x, you can find the corresponding y. Or for a given number in y, you can find the corresponding x. Is that fair? So oh, let me just talk about that a little bit more. Even in the 
yx plus mx plus c form. Now say this is a line. Okay. Um, so let me show the axis. That's this one, and this is the x-axis, and this is the y-axis. X and y. Right? X and y. Now, if I say that the equation of this line is y equals 3x minus 2. Now, can you, can you ask the same question that you asked uh, in relation to this line? Now, you're asking if we didn't know both x and y. Now, again here, now what is this x and y? We don't know both of them. It's just telling me that for any point on this line, the y coordinate is equal to three times the x coordinate minus two. So if you happen to pick, you pick a number for x or for y, then you can find the corresponding other number. For example, if, if, you start with an if, if x is some number, if x is, uh, can we just take like that? If x is five? Yes, of course, because there will be some point on this line where x is five. So if five is here, because this is an infinitely long line, right? Can, can x be some number here? Can x be here? Can, I mean, look at, look at the points on this line. x, the x coordinate, there will be a point for which the x coordinate is any number you that, me, that, that you give me. So you pick an x coordinate, and then you can find the corresponding, corresponding y coordinate. So if x is five, you can find the corresponding y. Or you pick a y. I mean, you say, okay, suppose uh, uh, y is 10. That means you are, you're trying to find the point here. Suppose y is minus 9. Then you're trying to find the point right here. What comma minus 9? Yeah, is that clear? Did I answer your question? Is that what you asked? Okay. Uh, was it clear to everyone else? Well, now I'm, ask, I'm, I'm answering you know, your individual questions, but you all have to learn from that. Um, the only, as I always tell you, the only thing is since I can't see your faces, I don't know how, you know how much of it like you, you, you get. Um, right, okay, if that is clear, now where will we? Uh, I think we just wrote points, we just wrote point slope form. Uh, let's write under that, uh, under point slope form. Write a little one, one sentence. If we know the coordinates of one point on the line, if we know the coordinates of one point on the line, write in red x naught comma y naught. That in red. Miss, can you repeat from the beginning? Yes. Please. If we know the coordinates of one point on the line, if we know the coordinates of one point on the line, one point on the line, and then you write x naught, y naught in red. I can't write that here. Okay, x naught, let that be a naught, and y naught. x naught, y naught. And its slope, and its slope, m, m in red. If we know the coordinates of one point on the line, x naught, y naught, the reason why we put naught is to say that that's a specific point. It's not a general point, x comma y. It's a specific point, like two comma three, five comma nine, something like that. And its slope m comma. Its equation can be written in point slope form, point slope form in red. Its equation can be written in point slope form.
point slope form point slope in red you have excuse me is the m in brackets no no it's not in bracket it's not it is not in brackets oh i took away the whole thing no it's not i'm trying to the thing with this uh, the, the text that you do in um, it's difficult to go back to it once i come out of it now i can't go and erase that bracket that i have accidentally put there so let me read that sentence again if i if uh, that confused you if we know the coordinates of one point on the line bracket x not comma y not bracket that's the coordinates that is in red and its slope m m in red comma its equation can be written in point slope form and then you write the point slope form y minus y not equals m times i'm showing you where the information goes in the form in red x minus x not y minus y not equals m times x minus x not okay then write uh, under that the next line this form can easily be turned into the point slope form this this can be easily turned into the point slope form so it will just end it there uh, not point slope form a slope intercept form this this is point slope form this can be turned into this can be easily turned into the slope intercept form we'll do we'll do one example right example example find the equation of the line find the equation of the line parallel to parallel to find the equation of the line parallel to y equals minus 4x plus 8 y equals minus 4x plus 8 and passing through 2 comma 5 find the equation of the line parallel to y equals minus 4x plus 8 and passing through 2 comma 5 now before you before you try this i know that even if you did not know the point slope form you can do this question um but all i want to show you is that once now that you know that there is a point slope form in which you can write the equation of a straight line you can easily use it and reduce the amount of work that you have to do now if you were not using this form if when the only form you knew was the slope intercept form y equals mx plus c form then you would have to like work it out now you would think ah find the equation of the line parallel to this passing through that mm -mm -mm. i will tell you why not you go ahead then don't think of point slope form forget that you know this can you just attempt it with the o level knowledge so that uh, think that you only know y equals mx plus c form can you write the equation of this line then you will be writing in 
by equals mx plus t form. Can you just do that first? Then I will show you how easy it becomes. Now that we know point slope form, we can just chup, whoop, just do it. Because if in, you, you can write it in this form. Okay, Senex already has it. Is that what you get? Y equals minus 4x plus 13. Is that what you get? So how would you be doing this if you, uh, if, if uh, when, when, when someone, someone says to write the equation of the line, you have only one option. You have to get y equals mx plus c form. So you would, uh, uh, you would first be m is, because this line is parallel to that one, it, has, it must have the same m. So m must be minus 4. And then you have to figure out c in order to write the equation in y equals mx plus c form. So what you would do is, so you would say, um, okay, so far I have the equation as y equals minus 4x, but I still don't know c. So then you would go and use the information that 2 comma, 4, 2 comma 5 is on this line, 2 comma 5 is on this line. So you would do, you would plug this in, right? Because this, this point must satisfy the equation. So you would plug this in. You would say five is equal to minus four times two plus C, and you can find C from that. C turns out to be, uh, yes, 13. And then you say, huh, okay, then that means therefore, the equation is Y equals minus four X plus 13. This is how you would do it if the only form of the equation of a line you know is Y equals MX plus C form. But now you see, Knowing the point slope form now, you have to realize if I know one point and the slope, I don't have to do anything. I just have to plug them into the form. So this, see how, how easy it becomes? I, they have given me a point. My point is, my, the point given to me is 2,5. And M, you figure it out now, huh? this is parallel to this, so m is minus four. And you straight away write the equation. How? Oh, y minus five equals minus four times x minus two, and you are done. That is what I want you to know. Okay, you don't have to do it in the point slope, uh, the, sorry, the y equals mx plus c form. If you are given a point, and the slope, just write it like this. It saves time. And you can, once you have written it this way, if you really, really want, if you can't help it, you can go ahead and remove the rather and move the things to the other side and say, got, get it to the y equals mx plus c form if you really, if you really need it. You don't have to. In the exam, if they just say, give the equation, any form is accepted. So when they give you a point and the slope, they expect you to use this form. If you go and do that work, they would get an impression about you that, huh, this, this student is just stuck with this form and can't uh, come out of it, you know? So um, that's the lesson that you have to learn from this point slope form. Uh, uh, accept him as a friend, a useful friend, and make use of it, okay? So in, in questions, when you have a point and the slope, use point slope form, right? No work done. Do you see? The, you wrote it straight away. Earlier one, see, a lot of, little bit of work there, right? Uh, so, but here you can save a lot of time. Just plug in the information into the form. Is that clear to everyone? Because now, however much I tell you, See will you what happens in the in the future? Like when we do questions, you would always go to the y equals mx plus c. You have to like you have you have gotten so used to it that it's like it's hard to forget it now. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. 
So all that you have to know is that if I have a point and the slope given to me, I will use point slope. Okay, let's make a pledge. If I'm given a point slope, I will use the point slope form. Okay, and finally, the next one, standard form. Right to the next uh, subtopic, parallel to point slope form, standard form. Standard form. Okay. Standard form is rarely used for you, but you have to know um, that there is that, that form. Uh, um, there is no way of like writing the equation in standard form straight away. In questions, you would either be writing your equation in uh, y equals mx plus c form or the point slope form. And these two forms can be brought into the standard form. Okay, so I will tell you what standard form is. Um, right under standard form, when the equation of a straight line, when the equation of a straight line, when the equation of a straight line is written in the form, is written in the form, Black. Written in the form AX plus BY plus C equals equals zero. It's called the standard form. When the equation of a straight line is written in the form ax plus by plus c equals zero, it's called the standard form. Here, a, b, c, r can be any number. Uh, any numbers is any number. Okay. Now, what this means is, like, it's not a form that you can straight away write out of the information given in a question. Uh, in a in a question, when you have when you are writing the equation of a line, you would always be writing it either in the uh, slope intercept form or the point slope form. But once you have these two, you can bring it to this form. That's that's what I'm saying here. Okay. So, for example, for example. Let's take uh, an equation written in uh, 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 slope intercept form. Say you have y equals 3x. No, y equals, say, say let's take a, like a, like a, a 3 fifths x minus 7 or something like that. Okay. So this is, you know that this is y equals mx plus c form. You can turn this into uh, standard form. So what basically happens in standard form is, what it's standard form means, bring all the terms to one side, the x's and the y's and the numbers all to one side and make it equal to zero. That's all it says. So you can simply do y minus three fifths x plus seven equals zero. That would be standard form. That's it. Okay. So it's just that that form is called standard form. If you don't like the fraction, you can multiply everything by five, five y minus three x plus 35 equals zero would also be standard form. It's better actually to give it in this way uh, without keeping fractions. Okay, that's it. So similarly, if you have an equation written in, um, written in point slope form, so let's, see, let's take an example, say y minus, um, mm, uh, y minus three equals half times x minus four, something like that. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the equation written in point slope form. 
you can turn it into standard form. So turning into standard form means all these things, huh, I have to somehow bring everything to one side and equal to zero. So you would have to remove the brackets or do whatever is needed. What can I do here? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think it's easier if I multiply both sides by two. So I would go first 2y minus six equals x minus four, then bring everything to one side, 2y minus x mm, minus two equals zero. That's your standard form, that's it, okay? That, that's all, that's all that means. Because sometimes, sometimes um, uh, it is useful to have the equation written in standard form. However, you will not have many applications of that form, but you just have to know that there is such a form. Okay, so uh, one more sentence, understand it from one more sentence and you can copy these two examples. <coughs> when the equation of a line, when the equation of a line, let me put this to silent. When the equation of a line is in slope intercept form or point slope form, when the equation of a line is in slope intercept form or point slope form when the equation of a line is in slope intercept form or point slope form it can be turned into it can be turned into the standard form. It can be turned into the standard form. So the equation of a line is in slope intercept form or point slope form. It can be turned into the standard form. You can't straight away uh, get the standard form out of the in, out of information. Ho hope that is clear. Now, slope intercept form and point slope form are two forms with which you can write the equation of a line out of the information given in your question, right? So, slope intercept form is if you have the slope and the intercept given, you put it into that form. Point slope form is if you are given a point and the slope, you put into that form. Once you have, have these forms, they can be turned into, if you need, to the standard form. Okay, that's all it means. Then can you copy these two examples? Example one, I'm showing you how to turn uh, point slope into standard. And example two, I'm sorry, first one is slope intercept to standard form. And the example two, uh, point slope to standard form. So this is example one and example two. And, uh, you, oops, example one, and example two. And the reason why, so while you copy this, just listen, the reason why we have these different forms is because each form has its own usage, just like, we, just like why we had different forms for quadratics. Who came up uh, with these? Uh, and, and why are we like even learning all these different kinds of forms if it is the same equation, right? Now, this and this represent the same line, it's the same line, just two ways of writing the equation. Uh, it's because each form has its own own benefits, usages, advantages. While you copy that, now I will give, bring I know, one more thing on behalf. Yeah. Okay, let me know when you are uh, done copying. Done, miss. Okay. Then, um, 
let's go to the next topic under straight lines. One more little thing we have to learn about straight lines. Um, now, what you learned so far is how we can write the write a line in coordinate geometry, how we can specify a line with an equation, and we learned different forms in which you can write that equation of a line. Uh, next, what we are going to see is how to find, if you have two lines, if you have two lines in the, in the two-dimensional space, what are the different uh, in two-dimensional space? Okay, not in 3D, they, they can't go like that. They are in the same plane. Um, uh, there are two cases. Then you have two lines, there are two cases. First case, they could be intersecting somewhere. They would either intersect, if they don't intersect, they should be parallel. These are the only two cases that two lines can be in. Do you agree with me? Any other case? They intersect, they don't intersect. Anything else can happen? Either they intersect or they don't intersect. Is there a third case? Any two lines in, in two dimension would either intersect or don't intersect. They, they don't intersect if they are parallel. However much you extend, they won't, they won't meet anywhere. So they don't intersect. But if they're not parallel, they will always have an intersect, intersecting point, okay? So our next topic is how to find the point of intersection of two lines. Um, so put the next topic, uh, intersection of two lines. We are under the topic straight lines. It's a subtopic. Intersection of two lines intersection of two lines intersection of two lines and now this what we're going to discuss here would show you uh, the um, the remarkable thing about coordinate geometry the the very thing that i was talking to you about on the first day, how coordinate geometry combines geometry and algebra. Okay, that's, this, this is a good place to see it. Intersection of two lines. Let's go to a new page. Intersection of two lines. And right under that, let me see what I can write here with you, right under that. Oops, not in red. And let's, let's see what I can. Two lines on a plane. Write with me. Two lines on a plane. So I want to put a bullet point. I'll put a star. First bullet point can intersect at a point. Point, point. Or what's the other case that can happen? If if they don't intersect, then they are parallel. Or can be parallel to each other. So they either intersect or they don't. The case that they don't is when they are parallel. Right? This is not like anything uh, difficult to understand. It's all clear. So that means, for example, like I, if you show a diagram, uh, so if they do, uh, let's first say, after this you say, uh, if the lines intersect, if the lines intersect, oops, intersect, the point of intersection, the point of intersection can be found, can be found. Now here's how geometry and algebra comes together. Before I complete that sentence, let me show you. Now you can just stop there and don't draw what I'm drawing now. You can draw it later. I just want to show you.
Okay, say I have two lines. Oops, I'll draw it in a different color. There's one line and here's another line. Oops. And there's another line. And if I want to find where they intersect, right, that point, this point right over here, the point of intersection, right? This point of intersection. Now, finding that point of intersection, I'm talking about something geometric. I have two lines and I want to find where they cut. I can do that by doing something algebraic. If I have the equations of the two lines, can someone tell me how to find the intersection point? Finding the intersection point of two lines algebraically, what you have to do is Afra says, Oh, Afra, did you lose a part of the letter? So we just started intersection of two lines. After the topic, which topic? When did you lose us, Afra? Exactly, exactly when did you lose us? Were you there when we started intersection of two lines? Miss, I wrote the topic intersection of two lines and I lost connection. All right, okay, so I was explaining about that. We wrote under that topic, we wrote what I have written on the screen. The last sentence I have to complete. Before I complete that, I was explaining something. So I'm explaining about um, uh, about how to find the point of intersection of two lines. Uh, how we can do it algebraically. Like this is something to do with the picture, right? It's a it's a it's a geometric thing happening, but we can do it by using algebra. Can someone tell me how we can do that? Do, can you guess? Can you think? I, for that, I have to give you the equation of the two lines now. Okay, so I give you the equation of the green line and the equation of the purple line. If you have the two equations given to you, how could you find their intersection point? So you want to find the coordinates x and y of the intersection point. Can you find it? Is there a way to find it? What is this x comma y? How do you think we can find it if I give you the, the two equations? This needs algebraic thinking. So think what it means to find the intersection point now. If you think of the green line, if I give you the equation of the green line, y equals, it's an example, okay? So this is y equals 2x plus 3. That's the same equation that comes to my mind all the time. And say the equation of this is y equals, this is y equals um, minus um, 4x plus 5, okay? How would you find the point of intersection of these two lines? First, think about this, okay? Now, the green equation, y equals 2x plus 3, is giving me how the coordinates of the points on the green line must be. It gives me the relationship between the x and the y coordinates of the points on the green line. The purple equation is telling me the relationship that must be held between the x and the y coordinates of all the points on the purple line. Now, at the intersection point, that point where they intersect, that pair of coordinates have to satisfy the green equation as well as the purple equation, because that point is common to both lines. No other point is common to both lines. That's the only point common lying on both lines. So that particular pair of coordinates have to fit into the green equation as well as to the purple equation. Does this sound something similar to something that we do in algebra? Finding the values of two 
two variables x and y are variables for the green line they can be different different numbers for the purple line they can be different different numbers uh, according to a certain condition we want to find one point where both are satisfied how do we do that something like something similar to that in algebra where do we do where do we find when we have we have to find two on two things they have to satisfy one condition and another condition at the same time i give you two conditions that have to be satisfied by two unknowns and you can you find the values of those two unknowns simultaneous equations right do you did that did that uh, come to your mind so now think about this algebraic i have one equation y equals 2x plus 3 there are so many x s y x s and y s that would satisfy that. I have y equals minus four x plus five. There are so many x s and y s that would satisfy that. If I want to find a particular x and y that satisfies both of them, I have to solve them simultaneously. So it's it's solving a pair of simultaneous equations. That's something that you do in algebra. But to find the point of intersection of two lines, we take these two equations and do an algebraic manipulation and find the coordinates of that point. See how these two come together? Okay, so this is the remarkable thing in coordinate geometry. Now let's complete this sentence that we were writing. If the lines intersect, the point of intersection can be found by solving the two equations simultaneously. By, now I can't go back to this, uh, that's the thing. I don't know how to go. Do you know how to go back to the this box that I was writing? I can't. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, so I can't. Ah, oh, right, okay. I did it. I did it. Found by. Oops. Found. Found by. Solving. You can write that part in a different color. If I think that would be nice. Let's write that in red by so oh the whole thing became so apparently i can i can't do that in this i just have to st stick to one one nah, one color found by solving the two equations equations simultaneously Now I hope that um, you really understand. I hope you really understand now how, by solving these two equations simultaneously, we can find the the coordinates. Because that point, the the two numbers that at that intersection points have to satisfy both of them at the same time, right? Ah, oh, sentence two. Sorry, Miss. I had a brief. Oh, you too. Yeah. Sure. Send it to another thing. Is I see. Yeah. Send it right. Okay. Um. From intersection. So we. You have to write this little note. Oh, you. You missed a bit of an explanation. Please, I. I will send you the recording to both Afra and. Who had, uh, yeah, our friend saying it, you know, um, please go to that section where you missed it and please listen to it because uh, that's important. Uh, we just talked about how we can find the, the coordinates of the point of intersection of two lines when the equations of the two lines are given. It's a matter of solving the two equations simultaneously. And we talked about why, why, why that makes sense. Because when you solve simultaneous equations, you're trying to find the values of the two unknowns that satisfy both the conditions. What you're trying to do here is the same thing. I have two equations. I have to find this point, the x and y for this point, that satisfy both equations. So I can do it by solving um, the equation simultaneously. Okay. Uh, so after you write this, uh, show a little uh, diagram like this, show two lines. Or you can actually say example, example. You can just write, you can just say example, oops. Oh, it's okay. Uh, 
and copy this. Miss the text after the point of insertion can be found as gone. <laughs> Let's see whether I can recover it. Let's see whether I can recover it. Oops. No, no, what is that happening? No, it's gone. I don't know when how that happened. Let me let me try putting it back. Okay, I think can be found. So this is Sustainitu. I'm sure everyone else has wrote this. Can be found by solving the two equations simultaneously. Okay. And then draw this like an example. Copy this like an example. Okay, you're welcome, Senitu. Uh, like right here, example for this. Okay, and then just write, uh, let's make this X naught, Y naught. Because if you just write X, Y, that's very general. If you put a naught or a X one, Y one to say it's a, it's a particular like exact point, you can just write here, X naught, Y naught can be found. X naught, Y naught can be found, can be, can be found for U and D found by solving, by solving the two equations, equations simultaneously. We'll do an actual example simultaneously. Okay, we'll quickly do one example. This is part of the note. Uh, I'm just showing you, right? We'll do an actual example now. Write example one. Example one. Find the coordinates of, find the coordinates of, find the coordinates of the intersection point, find the coordinates of the intersection point of the lines, of the lines, y equals minus x plus four, y equals minus x plus four, Oops. y equals y equals minus x plus four, and y equals, and y equals two x minus eight. 2x minus 8. Find the coordinates of the intersection point of the lines y equals minus x plus 4 and y equals 2x plus, uh, sorry, 2x minus 8. Okay. Now, how do we do this? We just take them and solve them as, as, uh, as a pair of simultaneous equations. And the thing about this, now, usually you, you are used to seeing simultaneous equations like this. Now, if I rearrange this to like, usually your simultaneous equations look like this. Na. Your variables are on the same side usually, right? Like you are used to seeing simultaneous equations like this. Now the same two, I can write like that. This is how you see them. The X and the Y, the unknowns are on one side and, and the numbers on the other side. But here, since these are equations of lines, it will be in a in point slope form or slope intersect form. So I have given you Y equals MX plus C form. And it's even easier to do solve them when you are given it this way. Tell me what you should do. 
so because you in the two equations you have why why made the subject so it's what should you do it's very easy what to to think what you should do let's label them as one and two because i have why being made the subject already readily there why is the subject in both equations what can i do i want them well, what can i do if you, if you think of substitution method i can substitute i can take this and go and put it here or take this and go and put it So sorry about it, uh, this got stuck. I don't think I will have the things that I've written. Yeah, so I don't have it now. We will just, anyway, we have to like wind things up now. So what we will, I will, what, what I will let you do is, I will let you solve it yourselves. Uh, so it's, it's easy to see what you're supposed to do. You already have y is equal to y is equal to, you can simply equate the two expressions. What you are actually doing is substituting the y expression in one equation to where the y is in the other equation. It's substitution method that happens, uh, but you can just think of as equating the two y expressions. So you are trying to find the y coordinate where both expressions are true. Uh, and then after finding, sorry, the x coordinate, after finding the x coordinate, you can substitute back and find the y coordinate. I will, before, the, is the recording still happening? I hope so i think so let me stop sharing this yeah it is uh so i think we will stop from that because did you already did anyone already quickly solve it it's a very quick solving what's the point of intersection let's finish it off actually i mean it's not a yeah so what's the coordinate what are the coordinates of the intersection point umasha what did you get? Four comma zero, very good, yes, right? Four comma zero, simple as that. So that's how you find the point of intersection of two lines. Now, you, I want you to think about this. This should be a huge moment where you realize, oh wow, we found where two lines cut by solving the two equations. So if you, now you can generalize this knowledge. What if I have a curve Maybe, so, maybe two curves, and I want to find where they intersect. If you have the equations of any geometrical thing, line, curve, anything, and you want to find where they intersect, it's a matter of solving the, the corresponding equation simultaneously. Okay, so this is a general observation that you have to make about uh, uh, in coordinate geometry, that any intersection point between two lines or two curves can be found by solving the corresponding equations um, simultaneously. Okay, so I will stop from there. I think I might send you a couple of, uh, do you all have the textbooks? I forgot that. You do, right? Uh,